as a team, we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff. You find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. Yeah. We claw with our fingernails for that inch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna win that itch. And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. There's six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. Yeah. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. Yeah. Right? That's the team, gentlemen. Yeah. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. Yes, we will. Couldn't have said it better myself. Welcome to the show, guys. I'm your host, Popeye, from federaljack.com. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. And today, I have a very, very special show lined up for you guys. I have two very, very, very special guests coming on. The first hour, I'm going to be joined not only by my co-host, JJ, who is always hanging out with me, um, but I'm going to be joined by one of the most awesome activists you guys will ever meet, He's a radio show host himself. He's got a very impressive background. He's been hosting radio shows since he was like 15 years old. Okay, that's impressive in itself. Nice. And he's an all-around great guy. His name's Bob Tuscan. And in the second hour, we're going to be joined by Gary Franchi uh, from RTR. Uh, he's made Camp FEMA, Camp FEMA 2. So um, stick around. The show is going to be great today. But uh, without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to the man himself, Bob Tuscan. Take a bow. Hey, thanks so much, Pop. I know you're, you're too kind. I'm a big fan of Federal Jack and all that you do. And when I saw your attempt at the city commission meetings, I said, this guy gets it. This is what it's all about. We need to get into, in front of our commissioners, in front of the, you know, the local channels, and get the word out, whether it's on fluoride, 9-11, you name it. We have to demand. A, yeah, chemtrails has been a big one. We met with the local EPA officials here, uh, and I urge everyone to meet with their local what EPA was their, officials. What was their response to you, Bob? Well, it was interesting because because I'm going to Skype call them. My show's on Sunday, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call them on my Skype account and, and record them. It, I, obviously, you got to tell them you're recording, right? So. Who knows if the interview will just end right there, but yeah. And I've been noticing that they've been flying lower and lower and lower. This, I don't know. Anyways, yeah, what was, your, what was the response? Sorry to interrupt you. No, not a problem. Well, what happened was is we actually set up a hearing with them and met with the local EPA officials. Every county around the country 
has its own um, board of EPA officials. Right. And we were referred to them by the county, actually, after going to the county meetings. Uh, in addition to being able to speak at the city commission meetings, usually you have an opportunity to speak at your county meetings as well. So the county referred us to the EPA board here locally. We sat down with them. We presented our information. They actually heard us out, asked questions. All of that was recorded, and we put up at our YouTube channel, uh, all linked up to bobtuskin.com. That's T-U-S-K-I-N. And we sat down with them. They gave us some recommendations. We talked about you know, establishing more tests and what tests they had. And we followed up with them. Uh, and no real um, breakthroughs as of right now, but we're still hoping to work with them. And at the very least, we hope to be an example to other people around the country to do the same thing. Because if everyone was doing this on a grassroots level, we might see some change. Now, we have to realize that the chemtrail aerosol operation is compartmentalized and it's on a need to know basis. But I can so tell you it's nationwide. Local, well, every local EPA official, though, is not in on the. Oh, deal. yeah, no, you're right. Absolutely. But so, I saw, I just went across the country and let me tell you something, uh, Mr. Tuscan. I saw aerosol spraying in every state. Oh, yeah, and in different countries as well. Yeah, it's international. This operation is something that is poisoning us worldwide. And, and we even have if to it's ask ourselves. silver oxide, it's, you know, that's what they, I, I mean, that would be one legitimate if they were, you know, seeding clouds. But, you know, you both you know as well as I do that there have been finding aluminum and barium in it, in, in, in the groundwater and virgin waters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the best way to establish that evidence is by taking a sterilized jar and collecting the water yourself. You don't believe what we're saying? <laughs> Verify the test yourself, and your local EPA, like ours, will expect that. They want, they want to verify this to, to make it relevant to them. And if that's what they need, well, then by all means, let's give it to them. Let's establish uh, the science behind it. And it's already out there. People like Rosalind Peterson, Clifford Carnicom. Right, you want to get a couple of pebbles. You know, you get right there in the water, and uh, you just get the, a sample from the bottom, right? Because that's where everything sets to set, you know. That's where all the sediment uh, drops to. Yeah, but but the best way to do it is is rainwater uh, and collect the rainwater with a sterilized jar. So, uh, you know, and and you want to do it after they spray heavily. And you'll notice that the spraying often parallels with a heavy rain. So, you know, it's it's very we had common. Tornadoes in upstate New York last week, which is you had tornadoes as well. Wow. <laughs> which is uncommon to say the least. Yeah, there's and all sorts of reports about Harp being involved with that. Well, uh, New York State is very mountainy area, so for you guys to have tornadoes is very odd because the mountains themselves, the the drafts that come up and over the mountains and everything, that hampers uh, a lot of tornado forming. And you know, a lot of people who don't understand, mountains really you know, block the formation of tornadoes. I'm not saying they can't yeah. happen, but it's an oddity when it happens in a mountain. Especially area. where I live in central New York, right in the center of the state. It's just odd. And I grew up up in the northeast, so I, I you know, I understand. And Bob, actually, uh, you've been up north, correct? You were you from yeah, New York my, originally? Yeah, my, my family's all from New York, and um, a lot of my relatives are still up there. So I, I lived there for a time, and... It's a beautiful state. People forget. Uh, uh, 8,000 know, lakes, rivers, and streams. Oh, my goodness. It, it's beautiful. It's got so many different wildlife preserves and beautiful areas. Uh, the Catskills are beautiful. And, and, well, I, see, and I saw a bald eagle in my yard. Not in my yard, but from my yard just, just the other day. And Were then you JJ really shot it and ate it. <laughs> oh, just no. Oh, no. That's, just that's highly kidding. illegal. I know that. <laughs> That you they're going to raid your house for you that comment. Fe- yeah, they'd come there quicker We're gonna than We're going to be at your door tomorrow because I said that. Are you kidding me? That'd be just my luck, too. Well, see you know, Federal Jack, and you wonder why they enough. come after you, man. And the preserve where they where they actually, because <laughs> they were so endangered up here, but at, at Montezuma, if you live anywhere near there, it's actually illegal for you to cut, even cut your own trees down. you got to get permission. You have to go to the town board and get Welcome permission. To Agenda 21, and that's just going to exactly. be happening. Dude, all this, the whole thing, I just put up a video um, 
Lauren uh, Murray, I, I think Bob, you, I think you know who she is. She's she's part of the. She was on a Ventura show. She talked about the uh, in, during the water episode. She was on. She was the one that talked told about the the Chinese taking the aquifer, the freshwater aquifers, and you know they're taking it with well, huge bladders here, all over to China. Nationally, they just signed, and, and there was a there, there was a big to do about it. But in the media, nothing. The Great Lakes St. Lawrence Seaway uh, Water Resource Compact, which Essentially, our UN rules and regulations, and we and and, and there goes our, our the rights to our own water. You know what I'm saying? You guys should Google and, that. And water is what it's all about, really. I mean, we could talk about oil and all these other things, but the fact is that we can't live without water. Uh, well, should, you know, what? Bob had an interesting. We had an interesting conversation a couple weeks ago about Libya, and I actually. Um, uh, I believe that you even called in coast to coast questioning uh, some stuff about Libya and Iraq and everything else. But during I Ir- welcome back, guys. Sorry about the uh, going right into break. We didn't even realize that the bumper music was a little low, and uh, we were Correction, having such a great. Didn't. Well, yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't hear it come in. So it's it's my fault. But we were having such an enthralling conversation with Bob Tuscan that uh, you know you didn't really miss much. It's okay. We picked it up as soon as we heard the commercials and we stopped talking. So we're back. Sorry, my mistake. I know rookie mistake. Whatever. Anyway, Bob, uh, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Like why you got involved. It, what woke you up and the things that you're doing right now. Yeah, I appreciate that, Popeye. Uh, what got me involved, uh, what woke me up, you know, 9-11, of course, was a big thing for all of us. And to realize that we were lied to about the largest crime in our lifetimes, one of the most significant events in our lifetime, uh, what else could we be lied about, you know, to about rather? So you got to ask yourself, you know, what's really going on here? And, and through that, you can go down the rabbit hole and keep going down and keeping an open mind and critical thinking. I, I've been listening to talk radio and, and alternative media since I was 10 years old. I used to listen to Coast to Coast AM nightly as, as a kid, uh, and I would tr- tune in every single night and stay up late. And, of course, uh, my school uh, and whatnot uh, suffered because of that. But uh, I certainly did get an alternative education rather than the indoctrination uh, that most children face these days, and that's a whole different show. Good for you. Yeah, thanks. But... The, the bottom line is, you know, there's no one issue that I like to pigeonhole myself with. Um, and once you have woken up to, you know, these various larger issues like 9-11 and whatnot, you realize that the list never stops. And to limit yourself is just, you know, selling yourself short. So we have to, you know, be an expert on a lot of different topics. And that's why I host a radio show so that I can interview different people that are heck of a lot smarter than I am on a various, you know, different amount of topics. Uh, so the, the radio show is, is a big thing that I do. Uh, the second hour is picked up on the network here. And I, I'm thankful for that opportunity to, to get the word out and, and to continue the learning process, which that basically is all what my radio show is. You know, it's just my learning process and I'm sharing with you and it's an excuse to interview all sorts of great guests. I've interviewed many different guests uh, now and I realized that uh, there is no shortage of guests and information to, to look at. So uh, don't sell yourself short, folks. Don't, don't become too one-sided. Don't become, you know, only a Zionist guy or only a chemtrail guy or only a fluoride guy. All of these things are important to expose and to look at. Well, uh, just so, to look at at least, right? Well, at least. You know, it, there's an Aristotle quote that I often use that goes something like this, that it's the art of a, a good thinker to entertain a thought without accepting it. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to be agnostic with our thinking. You know, we, we can't be closed-minded. And uh, as much as we have to keep an open mind, we don't want it to be too open because then it's a programmable mind. So it's essential that we have the proper uh, skills of critical thinking and logic and whatnot. And that's been something I've been focusing a lot of my time on is looking at the the skills of the trivium, which is grammar, logic, and rhetoric. And it's it's essential a tool to look through all the lies and and to, you know, not get caught up in the logical fallacies, the ad hominem fallacies, you name it. 
uh, the list goes on because that's what the main street stream media does. They they know that people don't have the constructive critical thinking to see through the lies, and that's how they're able to brainwash so many people. Right, or the confidence to even trust their own conclusions. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people sure. might might not think, be, you know, they they might not think if, if they did 100 hours of research that it means anything that they came to a different conclusion than NIST or, you know, the 9-11 Commission. But I'm here to tell you that, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter how far you went through school. Your conclusions are valid if, if you put in some of the research. Exactly. It doesn't look. I've had people tell me, you, I'll bet you you don't have a university degree. No, you know what? I don't because I didn't pay $25,000 a year to go get indoctrinated into someone you else's see, BS. Popeye, I, that right there, though, is an appeal to authority fallacy. Yeah. Uh, because the information unto itself has nothing to do with the, the messenger. Okay. So, oh, exactly. To, sh- to shoot it, the messenger is ridiculous. Them, yeah. Exactly. It's like don't attack. It's like what they. I mean, I don't think. I personally think WikiLeaks is a is a CIA slash Mossad, you know, intelligence front. But uh, I have people that disagree with my opinion on that. But uh, yeah, allegedly, whatever. The point is, look look how they treat Assange. Rather than look at the information, stuff like DynCorp trafficking little boys over for sex parties with Afghan police. You get laughed at if you talk about that. Like that's like well, a fa- yeah, like but it's instead not of focusing true. on that, they focus on Assange leaking it. Yeah. Like what who cares about it? <laughs> and the public relations that part that, that it about caused. smuggling little kids for sex parties. That's that's disgusting. That was their main concern was the public relations uh you know that the information and, and, and the diplomatic relations Ooh, it, it's PR. It's all it's all CYA. They want to cover their butts. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and they anybody they dismiss it's funny because they have again Pavlovian response. People are like Oh, conspiracy theory. Ha, 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 ha. They laugh at any time you bring that up. It's a very programmed response. But if like, look at the people Bob has on his show. In fact, uh, some of the guests that – He's uh, got a great show. I listen to exactly. it and for almost a month now or so. Be, I, I have to be honest. I'll give him credit because of Bob. I've been, uh, I, Bob introduced me to a few people that I've – you know that I knew, but I didn't have contact with them, and now I'll be able to. Uh, you know, they're going to be able to come on my show and give out information. So you guys, yeah, a lot of people have Bob Tuscan to thank. So pay attention. Well, information should be open source. You know, there's no sense in exactly. hoarding guests or contacts like uh, other individuals charging have. for archives. I hate but that. See, that's why I. That's why we link. That's why we're all like we're. But Bob, Bob, and I are part of a greater effort to kind of link all these grassroots organizations together and bridge all these gaps so that rather having all these little satellites speaking, you know, blah, 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 we can not only work in, we can work in unison as well as working separately, but we'll have that, that gap bridged so that we We all have our own little crews to, you know, not crews, but our own little groups of people that well, there's, yeah, but there's no, the there's look, the information needs to get out. The only way we're going to win is yeah, if it spreads get that way. For That's real. why I have the opening of my show, the Al Pacino speech. That's why it's there. For that's why I edited it and together so that you can, you know, I hope it inspires people. That's why it's people need to come together as a unit, you know, and work together instead of well, I'm well, just, don't be afraid to get pushed because you, you know if you're not getting pushed around a little bit, then look, yeah, you're not doing something right if you're not getting any flack, okay. Like any bombardier will tell you, you're you get the most flack when you're over target. So if you're if you're getting people making fun of you and laughing at you and stuff, you're doing something right. You know, don't feel bad if someone picks on you because you're giving them information and they say, "Oh, ha ha ha, you're crazy." You should feel empathy for that person because they're so brainwashed that they can't comprehend anything that they're not told by the mainstream media. Now that's pathetic. You're not pathetic for going, mm-hmm. "Hey, we're on a train and the train's going off a cliff." You know, they're pathetic for going, oh, I don't see any problem. What's the big deal? That's pathetic. You know, at least in my opinion, that's how I view it. And that's why I do what I do. You know, we're on a train. I see us going off the cliff. And if we don't do something about it, I'm going to bail off the train no matter what. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go off the, the cliff with the train. I'm trying to take as many people with me and save as many lives and educate and wake as many people up. And just maybe if we wake up enough people, maybe we can stop the train from going off the cliff. You know what I'm saying? That's my goal is to stop the train altogether because I don't want anybody to go off the cliff. 
but the conductor seems to be psychotic and he likes the Rothschild family and he just wants to put it full bore. You know, he's getting his orders from the Vatican and they're 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 going full bore. So, well, to continue the analogy of the train. Oh, you know what? Hold on, guys. We're going to break. Guys, we're right back. We're going to go pay some bills. When we come back, I'm going to have Bob Tuscan pick up right where he was about to pick up. And we'll be right back. I will die, succeed, live in the struggle. I know I'm alive when I bleed from now on. It can never be the same as before. Because the place that I'm from doesn't exist anymore. This is the point of no return. Welcome back to the show. This is Down the Rabbit Hole. I'm your host, Popeye, federaltech.com. And today in the first hour, I'm joined by Bob Tuscan, the man, the legend himself. Bob, yeah. well, <laughs> you got a show on Oracle. Uh, what, what time is the show? Tell people what time your show is and, you know, what you, uh, the topics you discuss and everything else. Cool, yeah. It's 8 to 10 East Coast time. Uh, that's 8 to 10 p.m. East Coast time. It's also on the... Um, O'Brien Radio Network uh, for the second hour of the program. So check it out on Micro 1650 AM for the second hour as well. Um, and we, we cover different topics every night, really. Uh, I don't like to pigeonhole myself, as I said, too much. I'm very interested in health and, uh, you know, this pharmaceutical industrial complex that is poisoning us, preventing people from being able to think straight in order to become aware of just how deep this satanic new world order is. So I, I, I cover that topic a lot uh, on, the sub, on the show. It comes up quite a bit. On Monday's show, we'll be talking with a friend of mine and, and longtime um, health uh, activist and researcher, Liam Sheff. Uh, we also talk about just about uh, you name it. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll go into survival and preparedness. Uh, that's a topic that continues to come up as an extremely important topic. As you know, I, I am an organic gardener and very much interested in um, trying to get prepared so that not just for myself and my family, but for my neighbors as well. well and, and because I feel you like, know, you can't wait to the last minute to learn how to do these kind of things. Oh, if not you think if, you're going to be able to wake up one day, JJ, and say, oh, all of a sudden I'm going to wake up because I can't go to the store. I got to go to a FEMA camp or, or martial law, you know, sort of deal. Uh, with uh, with our grocery stores, which will happen at some point, they'll be rationing out food. If you yeah, don't want to put up expensive. with that, folks, uh, you better start learning now because you're not just going to be able to wake up. This this takes a little bit of experience. It's well, it's not like right JJ time. said, wait, waiting till the learning curve is death or learning is not the time to do it. It's to, you want to be prepared by that. You want to be able to fail a, a few times. Well, you need. You're going to. You've got to you learn need your to lessons. Give yourself room to fumble and make a mistake. There's Otherwise, lessons that only experience can teach you. Exactly. You're going to fail. Yeah, and but at the at that same uh, token, you know, baby steps, folks, because Absolutely. it is a bit overwhelming. A little uh, bit each year, or a little I, bit. I you know. Yeah, I don't want you to take too much on. Get in the habit. Start start getting some of the basic skills down, um, and you know you'll learn and, and build upon that and. Our show likes to do that. I, I got off the grid for a while, as I was telling you, Popeye. You know, I moved to Mexico in the middle of nowhere and lived on the land, essentially, with several fruit trees that we planted. We planted about 40 fruit trees. Our, our water supply came from an aquifer from the mountains there. It was absolutely beautiful, you know, out of the scenes of a movie. But uh, I, at, a, at some point, I, I felt very selfish. You know, here I am wasting away in paradise, essentially. Knowing. Right. Knowing that the rest of the world, uh, my family, my friends, my neighbors, you know, the, the people that I, I was working with, uh, with the radio show, everyone else essentially uh, is headed to complete chaos. And that, you know, how selfish is it of me? It's uh, being no, no different in a sense than the, the elite that are building these underground bunkers with their botanical gardens. Okay. I, if, I, if I don't want to be uh, as you know, evil as they are, then I need to get back and do something. And at some point, I hope to have an internet connection with a similar type situation. But the, at that time, I, I could not afford nor um, establish an internet connection where I was. Uh, so it was more important for me to come back and continue the show and the, and the activism. 
And since then, I, I'm glad I did come back because I've confronted so many uh, douchebags. Uh, part of my <laughs> candidness. You can uh, say douchebag, by the way. Am, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, and I, that's I one of our favorite yeah. words here. <laughs> it, it is, dude. Douche, douchebag and jerk off are two of I my mean, favorite. I know it's not. Verbs. I, it's probably not the best way to say. And listen, it, Bob. Here's something else that you always got to keep in mind. Is uh, and I, and I know you do. Is look, I you know people talk about well, you should just pack your stuff up and get out of there. Look, I, it's too late, man. Because there's too many people, not just my family, but friends and other people that are that are counting on me. I you know this is where I'm at. This is where I make my stand locally. I mean. That's all I can say is, is well, you as have to. Where Roberts are you going to run to eventually? If you keep football. running, where are you going to go? What country are you going to go to? No I mean, other country on the planet has you, our sure. freedoms to protect ourselves like it, we do. It's Popeye. It's not known as the New World World Order for nothing. Exactly. Like, where yeah. are you going to go? People tell me I'm going to leave the United States, and I'm like, where, yeah, where are you going to go? What other country can you go to? At least here in the states, mm -hmm. we still have the Second Amendment right now. If you go to other countries, and you can't even defend yourself. Sometimes, no. allegedly. Dude, I love Holland, okay? I, my mother was born in Holland. I've been to the country twice. I love it. It's an awesome country. But one of the things that's really retarded about the country is you can't defend yourself there. I asked a cop when I was there. I said, hey, what, 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 what are your laws and stuff here? I know you guys don't carry guns, you know, or the people can't carry guns, but what are the laws for defending yourself? And they said you're not allowed to. If you swing back, you'll get arrested too. And charged with the same, you know, crime of fighting and assault or whatever. I said, so what are you, what are you supposed to do? And they say you're supposed to call the police. So they literally want you to just turn into a little ball and and get beat up. And, and that's, that's because coming here too quick. Well, yeah, that's, but see, and, and I'm not making fun of anybody in Holland. That is a no. result of them, the the police and, and their society police having weapons too taken late. away from them, and and then being, uh, as John Preston would call it, pussified and. Their their like <laughs> their feeling towards self defense is completely different than ours. It's amazing. True. Well, even well, right now, I can tell you this: if you think if there's somebody in your house, kick you know, killing you and your wife and your family, and, and there might be five. If there was five cops outside your door, if you think they're gonna kick like like Kojak, kick your door in and go room to room and not, -uh, they'll stand outside the house until you're all murdered and then order them out or, or have a big standoff. But they're not coming in there to save you, so you better well, learn see, how to save yourself at if, least. Another thing, be willing a, to. There's another drastic don't even difference. Have that willingness. If you watch the Charlie Veach video where Charlie Veach gets arrested, watch how the British cops arrest Charlie Veach and think about how the American cops would have handled it. The yeah. cop comes in and he's like, you know, may I? Yeah, he, first they ask that they can come in. Charlie says no. And he says, well, I'm, I'm going to have to place you under arrest. Now, I, now, you know, by law, I can come in. But he wasn't. I mean, the cop was doing his job, but he was almost like very robotic and very methodic about it. But at the same time, he let Charlie brush his teeth, go to the bathroom. I, mean, I know, but that was just a scary in a sense that. Oh no! It was you know, very New World Order. Nineteen. Very much. He so. was leaving. There was even, no way. The, even the, if he didn't brush his teeth, he was going to stay home. Sure. No, you were going to take the ride. It was very sure. creepy. But can the, you imagine the Bobby, how the American though, cops would have handled it? The, the Bobby, as the, as they he call him, tased. even said the word draconian. Oh, he some... said not yet. He did you see that? Did you catch the nineteen eighty four double speak, Bob? He goes not to be draconian, but. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> when they uh, when they add the butt, be prepared. Okay, or as we for use, them to become draconian. As we say in the military, bohica, which stands for bend over here it comes again. Okay, nice. so whenever you hear them say, "I don't mean to," but <laughs> they're going to do what they just said they don't they didn't want to do. You're about to get that and experience it. And Tuscan's right; it was very Orwellian and creepy because as polite as they were. It was very matter of fact. Is it was look, a foregone conclusion. It's a political arrest, and it, to to Charlie's girlfriend's credit, she kept pressing the cops and saying, "Hey, you know, how does this job. make you feel?" Yes, she did. How does this make you feel? How does this make you feel? And sure. the cop was like, "Well, it's my job." Yeah, he, he and that and that's the response we get a lot of times. Just All following time. orders. See, but unfortunately, yes, that, and I hate to use that example because. Uh, you know, the Holocaust example is... Uh, of course, you know, but it's, you it's need been, only look at the Germans to see exactly well, what following orders gets you. Ignorance is bliss, and that's... You even have to use that. You can use other examples. I mean, look where... Sure. 
Look what we did to the Chinese in this country. We rounded right. them up and them in concentration camps, and Japanese, some of them were yeah. shot. Or yeah, excuse me, not the Chinese, the Japanese. My bad. All and I'm saying is, following orders doesn't Germans cut and it. Italians too, and there were American citizens that mm-hmm. were shot and killed simply for just getting too close to the fence. But hey, we were just following orders, right? Yeah. Well, there, you know, there comes a time where we have to stand up and say to ourselves, "Does this?" fulfill one of god's laws you know is this a natural law you know well, i could tell you something right now bob if every inmate in america right now every single one all together got up and stormed the gates there's nothing they could do they're all free i mean they just it just won't happen but you know well our prison population is creepy we have uh, what is it we have 25 percent of the world's uh, like 25 yes. percent of the world's criminals right are in the united states alone theories. all right guys we're going to break we'll be right back we're going to pay the bills when we come back you're going to hear more from bob tuscan and if he's if he wants to uh i invite bob to hang out for the second hour when gary comes on we'll, we'll find out when we come back from break if bob can hang out or not what's your angle are you a devil or an angel and I say both, as I continue to blame the Knights Templar and the Hospitallers. The real reason New York lost their towers. Don't sit back or hesitate to react to the impact. Many taking a nap. In fact, they would fake an attack to make way for the Patriots. Welcome back to the show. All right, guys, I have to I have to put some rumors to rest. I have to tell the truth. Um, Bob Tuscan does have multiple personality disorder, okay? And he is a mind control slave. He's got an alter ego that goes by the name of Bob Tusk. And I believe actually Bob is here with us. Bob, are you here? Oh, uh, yes, this is Bob Tusk. And uh, I'm glad that you have me on the show to finally <laughs> talk about how we are trying to kill you. Uh, you are nothing but Goyam, and the wedding, well, that was just a celebration of what's to come. Yes, and I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to let people know that the rumors are true, that because both of us come from a, a Jewish background, that we're both evil. So I just wanted to, yeah, we both work for the Rothschild family. Why do you think family. we wear the yarmulkes? Exactly, the yarmulkes so I just wanted to get it out in the open. Yes, we are Illuminati, we are evil, and... You know, I wanted to bring Bob Tusk on the show to show you that, yes, Bob Tuscan is actually a puppet of Bob Tusk, the real evil entity. So, yes. That, does, I hope that puts all the rumors to rest. Yeah, that <laughs> sounded so real. I mean, uh, well, I'm convinced. He, hey, Popeye, will you do me a favor and not have him on again? He just <laughs> follows me and is just such a pain. I know. Jeez. He's a psycho. He's a stalker. You know, that's what happens when you have an alter ego that works for the New World Order. He's been calling up all these radio shows lately, claiming to be a whistleblower. It's, it's been really bad. Jeez. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, we, were, we joke. We, we fool around sometimes. We have it's... to stop with the inside jokes because the listeners are tuned in to hear about how we're going to inspire the revolution. They don't know yeah, what Yeah, here we are joking. About. But you know what? Sometimes we need to inject a little humor to make them laugh because if we, if we were all doom and gloom, then... Uh, you know, we'd be like every other radio show host, and they'd probably want to go shoot themselves in the head at the end of the day because we'd just be filling their head with negative programming. But That's true. Well, it is what it is. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's good to have a little humor. Because- We've had some really good shows that we put out a lot of information. 90% of our shows are just strictly content. And that's why I, I, I'm bringing more and more guests on. But again, I got to thank Bob for helping me be able to get some uh, real quality guests on, uh, you know, not have... You know, people call up and want to talk about like going and working out, or you know, their their teeth or anything like that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I have actual guests on, so it's who nice. might that be? <laughs> I'm just playing. Everybody knows who I'm talking about. <laughs> oh. I, I won't out him on the show. I won't say anything <laughs> on the air. I'm just playing. no problem. No, we we get uh, some great calls on but, our show from time to time, and you know, it, it's great to interact with people out there because we we all feel kind of alone. Uh, in the so-called truth movement, uh, because we we don't see uh, a lot of people around us in our daily lives a lot of the time that are into this stuff to the extent that we are at least. You know, I, I have some friends that are scratching the surface, but well, you know what, you know, Bob? Here's the deal. I I don't care, and it's all I talk about now. 
because I, I anytime anybody says any, anything to me, you know what? I just don't care at this point. I do, I do not uh, present myself as though I have a bullhorn and I'm a Jehovah's Witness. But what I do is I just don't, I don't pull any punches anymore in any conversation with anybody. When when any subject comes up, I tell them what I know, sort of. You know what I mean? I don't play along like, oh, I'm going to be politically correct a little bit. I just say, you know what? Mm -hmm. This is it. This is how it is, really. See, that's kind of my personality, JJ. I've always been like that. And, and that's why, uh, you know, my parents thought I was a pain in the butt probably uh, <laughs> as I was growing up. Because, you know, if my parents gave me some line of bull, I called them out on it. You know, yep. I love them to death. But that unconditional love is one in which I think needs to be honest with reality. And, you know, now I, I, I talk to my parents and they, they might not be on the same level that I am, but I at least... You know, can explain to them what's going on, and and that's the toughest thing I think is trying to get out there and not create too much of a, a dichotomy between us, uh, and still at the same time not be silent, not be complicit in the madness. Right, and just don't ever go along with like, you know, what they're selling on the mainstream. Somebody telling you, well, the price of oil is strictly because we invaded Libya. Tell them, no, this. The price of oil is because the Federal Reserve prints trillions of freaking dollars and that put it in, puts it into circulation, you know, and, and because of, you know, because of the way that there's all kinds of derivatives out there in the world. This is the reason that gas is going to be five dollars a gallon. They just well, use Libya as an excuse. Well, it's it's not even that. About. It's not even that. It's speculation. I mean, the, we're not absolutely really, we don't but, get any oil from Libya. Uh -huh. It's just people going, hey, gas might go up to this. So they just raise the prices. Hey, it's Papa, just the yeah, why. You know. May I speculate for a moment? Here's my so, speculation. Yeah, uh, throw throw out your speculation sorry, there, Bob my, Tuscan. Here's Bob Tuscan's gas uh, oil speculation. Uh, it's all crap. It's all a fraud. Yeah. We have had um, alternative t energies, you know, technologies, free energy, Tesla, you name it. The list goes on and on. It's all a fraud. It's all mind control. It's all BS, and we need to move beyond it. I agree. Well, I think they turned off hey, the power at the studio. Hey, hey Bob, oh, I got it. No, I was, I was reading a question for a second from one of our one of the people in the chat room. They want to know what do they uh, want? They want they want me to ask you about Trivium and if you have links for it. Yeah, TriviumEducation.com. That's the best site. My buddy Jan Irvin with Gnostic Media Podcast does a wonderful job. Uh, I'm doing interviews on a regular basis with a guy by the name of Gene O'Denning and. He's the guy that tutors me. Uh, go ahead and, and give it. Go ahead and give it another shout out one more time. Sure, triviumeducation.com, and I, I'm glad they asked because that's something everyone needs to follow up on. Uh, it was my is, fault. Salt was asking. He's a fellow uh, host here on the Orion Radio Network, and uh, he, he was asking. Like yeah, and I just well, I I was doing multiple things, and I noticed he asked, and I kept forgetting to ask you. So uh, no problem. He was yelling at me in the chat room to ask. He did it on purpose, Saul. Yeah, I wasn't ignoring you, Saul. I just today I have a very short attention span because I'm doing like 18 things at once while I'm hosting the show. So, yeah, well, you know that's what it's all about, though. They they don't want you to know what's really going on or or to know how to learn what's really going on, and they and teach they do, this they amongst their schools. They're teaching this amongst the elite. Uh, this is taught. This classical education is what it's known as. It's taught in these elite fraternities and elite schools and the, you know, Rhodes Scholar programs and whatnot. Uh, so they are making use of these skills, uh, and they know that we're too dumb, us the useless eater goyim, uh, that uh, to to see through this stuff. So, of course, they're going to be able to manipulate us with their propaganda campaigns. Of of course, they're going to be able to manipulate us uh, and get us. Uh, for a war effort because of a false flag terrorist attack. What's your theory on MK Ultra mind control, like Project Monarch, Bob? Great question. Uh, my theory on it, I mean, there's clear evidence that people have been involved with these programs, and it happens here locally to a certain extent in my area. I, I've met people involved locally here that were abused. I've known many victims of this multi-generational trauma-based mind control abuse. And I, I can't imagine that all of these people are just making this up. There's too much evidence that shows, A, regardless if their stories are legitimate or not, uh, people like Kathy O'Brien, Aaron McCollum, and so many others, 
we have to take a look at the fact that there is such a thing as physical trauma that creates a schism in the brain, which creates a barrier that allows for these people to develop these multiple personalities so that they don't know when they're the other person or not. And, and it's an awesome tool for the, the powers that shouldn't be to keep secrets. If you think about it, what better tool to, or what better spy or secret keeper than somebody who's totally brainwashed and, and, and you know, uh, almost uh, suffering from amnesia every time they change personalities. It's, it's complete amnesia. And, and they, you know, in, in Kathy O'Brien's case, which I know, Papa, you've been reading her book recently, and I've studied her, her stuff going uh, way back now. It's been like five years or so. And with her case, you know, it's, it's interesting because they didn't care if she drank alcohol or, or did coke or whatever. She was able to do anything she wanted on, on, that, on that note. But the one thing they wouldn't allow her to, to make use of was cannabis. Yeah, and I know. I, see, I, I, we, I made mention of that the other day. How we, well, that's why we, we said it was amazing how the one thing that was forbidden for any, any of these mind control slaves was marijuana. And yep. any form, whether it be, yes. you know, the THC, just a liquid or smoking it, they didn't. But they would give them what they back then they called them Wonderland LSD, wafers. Everything. Well, Wonderland wafers were ecstasy. And that's oh. what they called them back in the 80s. And they would give them that, Coke, heroin, everything else. But pot, as Bob said, was completely forbidden. You weren't allowed to touch it. So it kind of makes you wonder why they're so against medical marijuana and everything else. Because sure. It's healthy. It helps your body, and it. Pro- it I can tell you what it promotes: Quite possibly clear thinking cancer. and an open mind. Yeah, well, Rick Simpson's did- work is great. Uh, with Rick the Simpson. Cancer. Oh, the hemp oil guy. Yeah, he's. Uh, in fact, Bob, you know a lot. Uh, throw a shout out a link for uh, him if you know anything for Rick Simpson. Throw out whatever Run you know. Free, free Rick Simpson. Google free Rick Simpson. Check that out. Yeah. Uh, there's plenty of documentaries. You know, this is just. He's a, in a jail number. now, right? Yeah. Well, I don't think. 